Good morning, church family. It's Pastor Victor here sharing uh, this morning's devotion from our heart to your home. Um, as you uh, get prepared for this morning's devotion, I'm going to open up in prayer. Uh, Father God, we come before you uh, humbly, Lord. Uh, we ask that you continue to minister uh, to the men and women, Lord, on the other end of this, Lord. Uh, may you uh, equip them, Lord, with your word, uh, fill their lives, Lord, with your strength and your joy, and may their faith, Lord, uh, be built, Lord, upon your word and upon your name, um, Jesus Christ, Lord. And we thank you again for all that you have done, are doing, and will continue to do. And it's in his precious name we all say, amen. Well, good morning, church family, uh, and for friends uh, who are going to be visiting or, or seeing this for the very first time, I want to welcome you. This is our daily devotion that we do here. Um, prior to uh, COVID, we weren't doing this, but because of COVID, um, this is a great opportunity to apply these resources. Uh, things that were uh, intended for evil or the things that are used uh, for evil here is a great opportunity that the Lord uses for good. This is a social media. This is edifying uh, the body of Christ and expanding uh, his kingdom. We're going to be in John chapter 4, verses 46. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a nobleman who's um, going to have an encounter with Jesus. John chapter 4, verse 46. I'm going to read this all the way through uh, the end of chapter 4. And it reads, So Jesus came again to Canaan of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed, and his whole household believed. This would be the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Now, we don't really know much about this man, but we do know his title, his position. A man of authority, the king's right-hand man. And I bet if we were to interview him, he would say, you know, I don't know who this Jesus is. I don't really care who heals my son. I just want to make sure my son is healed. He didn't care uh, theology, didn't care the source or the origin of the power. He just wants his son to be healed. And if this guy heals people, well, I want him to do it. That's probably as much faith as he had. So he sees Jesus and he asks him, heal my son, verse 48. Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. You know, I came across the Living Translation, um, Living Translation version in 48, and it says, Jesus asks, won't any of you believe in me unless I do more and more miracles? Again, referring to this noble man and the multitude that are present. In other words, what he's saying is there is a crowd of people who are interested in me because of my miracles, not because of my mission, not because I am the Messiah, the Savior of the world. They just want a free lunch. They want to get their families better. They want health and wealth. That's all they want. They're following me for me to the name it and claim it message. And again, not of the mission of Jesus. Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. 
The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. You can hear the desperation in this man. We can uh, break down the word of, uh, of imploring, which is repeated over and over to Jesus. And this man is basically not there to argue signs and wonders or theology. He just wants his sick kid to be healed. And he continues intensely, again, that imploring over and over, Lord, please heal him. Please come. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. Now we should see the contrast here. The man says, come, and Jesus says, go. The man perceives with his own authority, if I tell him what I want, he'll do what I ask. It doesn't work that way. But Jesus said, it's in my timing and it's in my will. Like the noble man, we want Jesus to handle things for us, but we are willing, but we are, are we willing to handle things with Jesus? Are we willing to stand on God's word through our situations? Are we willing to walk in faith when Jesus says, go? You know, in today's society, there are many self-help programs, many ways to band-aid issues or seek a higher power that puffs up our confidence and provides superficial faith. But we discover in this text that it's Jesus who is lifting this man's faith. It's the image of a man who sees an emergency, whereas Jesus sees an opportunity. The next scripture shows us the most difficult decision this father, this husband, this man of authority will ever walk in. The man tells Jesus to come with him to heal his son, but Jesus says to the man, go back home. Your son will live. And the man believed Jesus' word and started home. I'm sure this wealthy man exhausted all his resources in finding healing for his son. So as a last resort, he travels 20 miles just to receive a supernatural healing himself from the Son of God. He could have rushed back home, but we gather from this text that the nobleman spent the night I'm sure meditating on this encounter and newfound relationship with Jesus, which resulted in more faith in the Lord. This tells us the reader, I'm going to sleep on it here tonight. I'm not going to rush by my emotions, but I'm going to be in prayer because I believe in the word of that man. The father discovers from the servants that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives that his healing took place. And he himself believed that his whole household also was saved. Do you see how the faith is being lifted? First, it's just faith in a higher power. That's the faith in the promise of Jesus. Now it's the faith in Jesus himself. As a result, his whole household believed. He believed, church. The implication is he believed in the person of Jesus, not just the promise, not just the power, but the word Jesus spoke. And it resulted in truly believing in Jesus. The witness of this man's faith is just, in Jesus led others to the same saving grace. So I pray that this morning, no matter Oh, where we're at in life and the emergencies that we are experiencing in and around our lives, may we have the perspective that Jesus sees it as an opportunity. And I pray, church family, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that you present it to the Lord and allow the Lord to guide you, direct you in everything that you are going through and dealing with. Again, this man presented an emergency and Jesus saw an opportunity. Let us reflect that in today. That way we can be that representation that Christ is calling us to be. God bless you guys and may the Lord continue to shine upon you, direct your every step and protect you all of the days of your life. God bless you. See you soon.